All right, let's get started with what has just happened at Davos. I mean, I'm really surprised that this video not only happened, it took place, but that they put it out on YouTube. I'm quite amazed, actually, that he was allowed to say all this stuff. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this video. And again, this was from the WEF annual meeting at Davos 2024. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to this uh, World Economic Forum session on what to expect from a uh, possible Republican administration. The kind of person, and I'll be candid here because I think I've been invited here to be candid, the kind of person who will come into the next conservative administration is going to be governed by one principle, and that is destroying the grasp that political elites and unelected technocrats have over the average person. Wow. I mean, I really cannot believe that he was permitted to say that and that there wasn't uh, any calling out from the audience, that he's actually there in their own domain calling them out on this stuff. I mean, this is pretty, pretty crazy. Let's see what else he has to say. I will be candid and say that the agenda that every single member of the administration needs to have is to compile a list of everything that's ever been proposed at the World Economic Forum and object <laughs> all of them wholesale. Boom. <laughs> wow. So this guy's actually the head of the uh, Heritage Foundation, by the way, in case you don't know who he is. He has his own show and, and all sorts of things. Anyone not prepared to do that and take away this power of the unelected bureaucrats and give it back to the American people is unprepared to be part of the next conservative administration. You know, one thing that Davos, mm. you might say, and the people come here stand up for is liberal democracy. So if the idea of that's going to be swept <laughs> under the table... Liberal democracy at Davos. Uh, okay, sure. ...is part of the idea. Hopefully that's not what he means. What do you mean, what do you think he means by retribution? Uh, okay, so just to give some context here, because they don't give context in the, the video, they're actually talking about Trump. So if, he's to, if he does come back as the next president... Uh, which I think you'll you'll notice as well. I want to show you some other stuff in the video that that is the way everyone seems to think it's going to go now. You can see this massive shift in the media and a lot of commentators. I want to show you that later in the video. Well, it's laughable that you would or anyone would describe Davos as protecting liberal democracy. It's equally, standing up for it. <clears throat> it's 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 equally laughable to use the word dictatorship at Davos and and aim that at President Trump. In fact, I think that's absurd. President Trump, if he's the next president, for that matter, I think whoever the next conservative president is going to take on the power of the elites, which I mentioned earlier. But there, the, the thing that I want to drive home here, the very reason that I'm here at Davos, is to explain to many people in this room and who are watching, with all due respect, nothing personal, but that's your part of the problem. Political elites tell the average people on three or four or five issues that the reality is X, when in fact reality is Y. Take immigration. Elites tell us that open borders and even illegal immigration are okay. The average person tells us in the United States that both rob them of the American way of life. They're right. Elites also tell us that public safety isn't a problem in big American cities. Just travel to New York or Washington or Dallas, Texas. The average person will tell you that the lack of public safety damages not just the American way of life, but their life. And he's not wrong, like what he's talking about here in, in terms of crime and things like that in big cities. And it's, it's funny that he said Dallas, Texas, because I was in Dallas, Texas uh, just uh, a few months ago, as I, I mentioned. And I said there was a number of things that I saw which uh, didn't align with the vision I had going to Dallas. I thought it was this really big, uh, modern, safe city. And that's not what I experienced. So I think he's right in a lot of the, the points. I mean, he talked about a lot of points. I've really just cut this right down. But I think he, he was right in most of the things that he talked about. There was a couple of things that I was sort of, you know, half agreeing, half not agreeing with. But the majority of things he said there, I feel that the average person, the average citizen also thinks. And we also had the full speech from Javier Millet, which I... It's too long to actually go into right now on this video, but maybe I can give you the bullet points here because he really slammed, um, again, the WF and the leaders. And I, I think they're starting to get scared. I really do. I think they're, 
they're running scared, they're getting worried, because up until now they've had all of this power, and they're really, you can see they're getting quite desperate on a lot of things, because of the, the overreach that they are doing on a lot of measures, you know, disinformation, misinformation type thing. You know, the proposals from the European Union at the moment that they want to spread this globally is an overreach. It's crazy talk that the, the policies that they want to enact in order to protect free speech by destroying it in the first place. It's just crazy stuff. So let's come back to this in a moment as to what Millet said. Uh, see if we've got enough time on the video. But we also had this from Boris Johnson. He says four more years of, of Trump is just what the world needs. I was really surprised that he said this, actually, because you have to remember that Boris Johnson is somewhat of a chameleon. So he will sort of align with whichever group he's with. So if he's with the WEF, he completely agrees with all of it, no matter how woke and extreme, he, he goes along with it all. But then if he's with the average person, he then becomes like a chameleon and agrees with them and says, oh yeah, absolutely. So he's now talking about how he thinks, oh, Trump coming back to the White House is a great thing and that he's going to, you know, take down the, um, you know, the elitists and all this sort of, all this sort of thing. So he's had a lot to say. He wrote a, a column just this week on Trump. And one of the things he said was, what the world needs now is a US leader whose willingness to use force and sheer unpredictability is a major deterrent to the enemies of the West. So he's kind of talking about Russia, China, a few other countries, I think, here. Another story this week that I found really interesting is uh, Zelensky. So he's said, you know, he's called on Trump, come on then, come and visit uh, Ukraine and, and end the war in 24 hours. Well, it's interesting which media source you look at, because some of the media sources that I've been looking at saying that Zelensky is is off this invitation and he's saying, you know, sort of like, please, Trump, come, come and visit. We, I really would love your, your help. But then you see others, CNN's a good example, or some of these other media. So you've got the right wing media, you've got the left wing media saying complete opposites. So the left wing media is sort of saying like, oh, Zelensky's making fun of Trump saying, oh, you know, come along then, you know, I'm sure you can, ha, ha, ha type thing. And I think this is why we are seeing, we'll come back to Jamie Diamond in a second, but I think this is why we're seeing, uh, let's open this up and play this. When there's a big, big news event, a big world event, people still come to the legacy brands. We still have a lot of trust, but I think you only have to go back. I think, I think we have to maintain that trust and we have to work at maintaining it in a way that we didn't have to do not so long ago. So if you go back really not, not that long ago, as I say, we kind of, we owned the news. We were the gatekeepers and we very much owned the facts as well. Yeah, now that is really, really interesting. So, so she's actually saying, we own the news. We own the facts. Um, you know, people trusted us, came to us because we owned it all. And that's just not the case anymore. We've been talking about this for a while now. People don't trust the media anymore, the mainstream media. They're completely losing faith and trust in the media. Even people who have always trusted the media are now losing that faith in them. Well, if it said it in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, then that was a fact. Nowadays, people can go to all sorts of different sources for the news, and they're much more questioning about what we're saying. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this is that we, we saw this reference later on in a conference, and I think it was Christine Lagarde or, or, or Ursula, it was, it was someone from the EU that was saying, based on what this lady said here, we really need to ramp this up, we need to put a, a, a rocket behind it, I'm, I mean I'm paraphrasing here, to stop all of this misinformation, and, 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 not, and they're using that word, but it's not misinformation, they're basically saying, we need to stop people from creating their own news and, and sharing information unless it's approved by us, the fact checkers. And I think this is one of the biggest problems as well that we are facing at the moment. And uh, Jamie Dimon, although I'm not a fan of him, he did say something quite interesting. I'm going to play you this clip from 1 minute 30 onwards because I think it's really, really telling of this sort of pivot that we're seeing with key people who know because there's you know fairly intelligent people they know the way that this is looking to go in November so they're starting to flip so they can get on side 
when this potential uh, flip comes in presidency. So let's have a look at what he said here. Bro, they're innovating. It's, it's everywhere. It's not just Silicon Valley. So we've got this great hand. But when people say MAGA... OK, let me give context as well. So he's talking about the American people here. And what he's saying is that the American people are actually really entrepreneurial in spirit and nature. And he's saying that the current administration is making a big mistake by being critical of the sort of MAGA crowd. So that's what he's, that's the context. They're actually looking at people voting for Trump and they think they're voting, and they're basically scapegoating them, that you are like him. Uh, and, but I don't think they're voting for Trump because of his family values. Now, if you look, just take a step back, be honest. He was kind of right about NATO, kind of right about immigration. Mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. China, Trade, China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Mm -hmm. He was right about some of China. I don't, th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he's, when he's, yeah. He may have been right. He, he, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. I don't like. But he wasn't wrong about some of these critical issues. And that's why they're voting for him. And, and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to Trump? hate 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's been, <laughs> and, you know, the Democrats have done a pretty good job with the... the right. Here's the other thing. You're even seeing the media starting to flip now. That is the thing that's got me sort of laughing about the whole thing. Even the media, these people who hated Trump, now they're sort of coming around to him because they are fearful that he's going to come back. That is what I think is happening here. Deplorables, right. hugging onto their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and listen to them a little bit? Jimmy, and, and I do think the economy will affect. And I think this, this negative talk about MAGA is going to hurt Biden's election campaign. Now, this was another clip that I wanted to show you uh, as to what Ursula said. Uh, just this week, which is pretty worrying. So here it is. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ihr Klaus, <laughs> your um, annual global risk report makes for a stunning and sobering read. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate, it is disinformation and misinformation. Of course. Followed closely by polarization within our societies. Now, some of these videos are really, really long. I know you don't want to hear every last detail. So I've just pulled out some of the things that were said. So she praised the EU Digital Services Act for establishing controls over content on social media platforms, aiming to prevent hate speech. Now, I've got to cover this in a video over the next week or so, the new hate speech bill, because it is really, really disturbing. And I think you need to know what is actually coming out. And I mean, really disturbing. It uh, takes a lot to bother me, but it really you know, bothered me earlier for about an hour with all the things that I'm being told I can and, and can't say, uh, according to the EU and YouTube and some of these other big platforms. She went on to say, we can see that the EU Digital Services Act will become the template for other countries to implement this. If you remember, the Digital Services Act is a way that the EU can exercise its power of people to control the information of platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, etc. Now, let's have a, a look at a couple of things that Mile said then. I think we've got enough time to cover this. He warned that Western values are endangered by leaders' shift towards socialist ideologies. Of course, I mean, this is proven over and over again. He criticized the leaders for moving away from freedom and towards collectivism, citing examples like state overreach, feminist movement, and social justice efforts. He expressed that socialism has consistently failed bringing about economic, social, and cultural ruin, along with causing countless deaths. Celebrating business leaders as the real heroes, Millet urged them to stand strong against political manipulation and dependence on the state. He highlighted the value of ambition in business, arguing that making a profit signifies providing superior products at better prices. He also pledged Argentina's full support to the global business community, emphasizing his view that state intervention is often more of a hindrance than a help. Presenting data, Millet 
illustrated how capitalism has played a significant role in alleviating poverty while criticizing excessive government meddling in the economy. He spoke against government policies like printing money, accumulating debt, subsidies and manipulating prices and interest rates pointing to the Argentine economic crisis as evidence. And finally then, here's a little clip you might uh, you might enjoy. But here he was taking a commercial flight. So he just flew on a normal flight to Davos, uh, which really embarrassed all of the political elites. That Mile was able to do this where they've said every year they can't because of security. So he went out and basically did it. He's also, in my opinion, shown himself to be a person of the people. That's why he did it. That's why he got on the commercial flight there as opposed to a private jet. So these are just a few of the things that I've pulled out as highlights from Davos this year. There's obviously a lot more that happened. If I think any of the other points are relevant, I'll do more videos on it. But those are the key things you need to be aware of. But I do want to get into a couple more pretty serious things that are going on uh, later in the week. But apart from that, that is you up to date on Davos. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for being a subscriber. Take care. God bless. See you next time.